Okay, so um, now we have some short talks. So the, the next talk is uh, by Steve Roderick. And Steve leads the AT&T Network Computer Security Incident Response Team. So very important team in AT&T. His responsibilities include managing a specialized 24 by 7 technical group within the AT&T Chief Security Office organization. His role is to provide direction, guidance, and leadership to a team of individuals, 7 365 This team supports not only AT&T Enterprise, but also government and commercial customers. His team provides a robust and capable security operations center functionality and capability that operates around the clock, providing real-time situational awareness. His team also serves as a central coordination point of contact for all computer security incidents. The services and processes delivered by this effort were modeled after industry state-of-the-art processes, but also add unique features to provide enhanced values to support the AT&T enterprise, government, and commercial customers. So first, let me introduce Steve Roderick. Um, Steve, come up. And then what we're going to do is we have a short video that will explain uh, some of what Steve is doing, and then Steve will give his talk. I'm Steve Roderick, and I'm the uh, operations manager for the AT&T Global Security Operations Center, the GNOC. And our responsibility is to maintain and protect AT&T's internal network. Here we have the Security Operations Center, and their responsibilities are similar, only that they're protecting your network. We have a lot of systems that give us that pre-notification that something is occurring, and that may be two or three weeks in advance. It's those types of tools that allow us to be proactive as opposed to being reactive. You're now in the heart of our security operations center, which is staffed 7 by 24. The team in here is going to be watching your network. You can see where the SOC here is in close proximity to our GNOC. If something's happening in the rest of the GNOC, that information is shared with these folks here. When the analyst is sitting there in front of a portal, you're using the same tools, the same systems, the same interfaces that we use internally they're seeing what's happening within your network. We treat your network no differently than we would treat our own. The average length of tenure within the group is 10 plus years. They're very passionate about what they're doing. They all hold a top secret clearance, TSSCI. The highest clearance that a civilian can have. We are responsible for government agencies and monitoring of their networks. The government entrusts AT&T with their network and their classified type data. That says a lot. I just hope that guy's sitting at the table so I can get his autograph. I'm Steve Roderick. I lead uh, three distinct environments. Well, that's a good intro into uh, what we do in the Security Operations Center, which is just an extension of the regular GNOC. Um, we provide 7x24 monitoring, and we've done this over, over years, so we've enhanced a lot of the processes, a lot of the systems, you know, we have uh, uh, folks within the team that have 10 plus years experience, I have very low turnover. So we've learned over the years. Uh, we've started from a reactive situation uh, to a proactive uh, environment. And that's been over a number of years. So we've gone through certain conditions. I know Jim Boxmar is down here and we've spent many a weekend on a virus. And virus writers don't usually come up with a virus during the week. It's usually in the summer on a Friday when you're ready to take the family to the shore and the virus comes out and we're stuck here. Um, it's not, not that great. I keep going back. Um, some of the security threats, uh, botnets, DDoSs, spamming, phishing, whaling, data leakage, insider. Um, we also, as, as, as was stated in the video, 
I run three distinct environments. The AT&T Enterprise, which is responsible for the internal AT&T security, uh, responding to those. In addition, I have two other operation centers, one in Bedminster, which is primarily commercially focused for our CETA, our security event and threat analysis. That's our commercial offering. Uh, we also support um, our government agencies out of, in a, out of an underground hardened facility out of Virginia. And that's our managed trusted internet protocol service. And AT&T was the first network uh, contract to be awarded uh, to provide MTIP service for, the, for government from GSA. Um, we had to adhere to very strict government uh, requirements. Um, they wanted to make sure that the people that were actually sitting in the seat could respond accordingly, that they weren't just warm bodies. So we had to produce the body of evidence to the US government in order for us to receive our authority to operate. Um, that just allowed us so that we were able to provide security services for our government customers. Um, our CETA, our security event and threat analysis, uh, is our commercial offering. That's primarily out of our Bedminster uh, Security Operations Center. Uh, both centers back each other up. So in the event of a pandemic or some condition that renders one op center offline, we can pick up the operation within the other center. And that's one of the things that we had to, we had to show to the government. Even though it's not a requirement for, for CETA, it's actually something that we do day in and day out within our normal operation. So we actually had to, they actually came up with a scenario and we had to run through it. They didn't tell us what day the scenario was going to be what the scenario was actually going to consist of. They just said when they were up here for the week, you know, interviewing, looking at the body of evidence, they were going to name the situation, the scenario, and actually have us run through it. Um, Thursday afternoon, they came to us and they said, your center in Virginia is offline due to a pandemic. Your 50% reduction in, in, um, in people, go to it. And we had to actually run through our DR. It was that, not only showing them the electronic methods and procedures and that we could do it, but also showing them that we could, in fact, do it. Um, AT&T, as I said, uh, received their authority to operate. Once we started to onboard government agencies, six months after the agencies were onboarded, we had to go through a CCV, which is the Cybersecurity Validation. The government comes back in and they want to make sure, okay, we, re you, we gave you your authority to operate, now show us that you can do what you say. So we had to go through the whole body of evidence, interview, show training records, show certifications, make sure that the people that were responding 7 by 24 were in fact trained to do that. Um, AT&T came back with 100% uh, grade, so I think we're good to 2014 um, to provide uh, security services. Um, as I said, uh, we have a primary government SOC and a primary commercial SOC. Um, the primary government SOC, Security Mission 1998, Security Mission 2001 for our commercial. The center in Virginia that's primarily government focused is located in an underground hardened facility. Uh, it's back up to our commercial SOC. The other uh, center is located in Bedminster, also a hardened secured facility. Uh, we both use the Aurora Threat Management System. And that's a platform that was developed, not initially when we were involved with security services, but you know, how can we do things better? How can we do things quicker? Because you don't, want, you don't have the, you don't have the, the bodies, you know, 20 or so, 30 or so people to throw within a security organization. So you have to do things better, quicker, and more efficiently. So by developing a system that allows us to to do more of the analysis, having an analyst sitting there, you have the system do a lot of the back end. Um, case management, um, you know, a lot of the methods and procedures. You know, so you're not having you know, 20 or so people, hey, what, uh, what binder was that you know, methods and procedure in? You're able to do everything within the Aurora Threat Management Portal. And that's constantly being developed, and that's a big selling point that's allowed us to go from working on a security issue, which would take us an hour or so, hour and a half, maybe two, uh, to down to 15 to 20 minutes because the system is doing a lot of the back end. 
We have uh, U.S. government-wide situational awareness, commercial customer coverage, the sensitive but unclassified or higher classification, that's the TSSCI. Even though it's not a requirement for our, in our commercial space or in our enterprise to have a TSSCI, which is a top secret secured compartment information. That's where you go when the government has this top secret issue, you go into a little room with secured equipment and you talk about the security concern and what you're going to do to help mitigate. So even though they're not required to, to hold that clearance, my whole team uh, does. And that allows us to, to have a pretty robust team. Not only the operations team, but there are other folks within you know, Ed's chief security office that also hold that clearance. So if there's an incident where we need to draw from other, other teams, we're able to do that. So tightly integrated. Now I understand, Pat. It's, uh, we're flipping the, flipping the buttons. It is uh, uh, AT&T's team structure. Um, we've developed this over the number of years. We have tier one, tier two, uh, tier three incident management. That's where most of my team is. The AT&T Computer Security Incident Response Team is our main team. That's seven by 24. Uh, and they interact very closely with the Security Operations Center, or the SOACs, um, and sharing that situational awareness so that right when we're aware of something in our enterprise, we're able to apply that to both our customer and our commercial space. So at any, any given point, if I need to reach out to any of those teams, they're not only enterprise specific, they're actually, I'm able to use those teams seven by 24 for any government issues, any commercial issues that may arise. So you don't have to build out a whole team just for uh, your commercial space or your government space. We utilize those teams that have gone through all of those painful security uh, incidences over the years that we've, that's allowed us to be proactive. Um, the goals, situational incident intrusion management, situational awareness and alerting, forensics analysis, defend against future attacks, deter attacks through investigation and prosecution. Really our success are being first to know, alert, advise, and inform, and that events are controlled, mitigated, uh, in a timely fashion, without impact. Um, some of this security center operation roles, I've got like a minute left, so I'll run through these. Um, you can see some of the roles uh, that we have within the ops center. Um, and uh, our discovery, identification, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and follow-up. So having the 7x24 team has allowed us to be proactive as opposed to reactive, which has allowed us to offer these service, services to our, to our customers, whether they be commercial customers or government agencies. AT&T, they really do it really well, and I'm really proud to work for this company. Um, I think that we're the best in the industry, and... It, it shows with you know, the team of folks that we have available within the chief security office. We've got six, 15 seconds left, so uh, any questions? For Steve? Okay, thank okay. you, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.